surprise for you close to the end of the show. Oh, okay. Ooh. And um, when I get back on the air, I want to invite you guys on my show, too. So yes. I can't be on while I'm campaigning, but I do plan oh. on That's the sucky part. That's yep. what it is. He's a real Oh, honey, what's happening? You have to. I have a... Um, Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got everything up? That was me. Um, call in number. Mm, okay. Oh my God. Is that clear? Call in number is up. Uh, Facebook Live's up. Facebook Live's up. Facebook Live's up. Hey, Facebook Live. Hello. All right. Everything's up. All right. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Please have your phones on silent. Oh, yeah. Let me turn my phone off. Mm-mm. 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 Three, two. Welcome to the headline. I am your host, Larry H. Gardner. Uh, we're live in the studio at www.wnrb1081.com. Nerve DJs, where we get on your nerves. The A stands for hotter than John Gruden's emails. <laughs> Let's get to it. We got the guest in the building, the lovely Miss Amani Capri in the house. Uh, before I bring her in, we need to talk first of all. Uh, the queen of Simply Stunning Media, Lizala Perry, is back. How are you doing, Lizala? I am great. I am so happy to be back here. I've been spending my summer at Cleveland Public Theater, uh, being a stage manager, working a lot of shows, having a great time, and I'm happy to be back. All right. Of course, we got the queen with the gold mine who celebrated her birthday this past Saturday. Surprise, Jay, that we came up over there at Cornerstone? Yeah, I was really surprised. Shout out to your mom, Miss Ann Rudolph, that pulling it off. I was surprised. I'm surprised she got it past you for real. You know what I'm gonna tell you? So we were at home, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, after a certain time, you know, I feel like I'm getting in the shower. I'm going to bed. Bed. So I told my daughter, I said, "Are we going somewhere?" She said, "Would you please get dressed, girl?" And I'm like, "Oh, okay. So I guess we going somewhere." Shout right? out to I Courtney J for checking moms. Because I was about to go to bed, honey. I know you was. I know you You was. know, I don't play. Right. I need my booty. <laughs> exactly. So, we have certain situations going on, uh, and that's, but we also have sadness. So, so, Judge Larry Jones passed away uh, this past Thursday. And also, we had a recent passing today. Uh, Melvin Hutchinson, a.k.a. Mr. Milligram, has passed. But the biggest shock, well, not shock, but to me as a journalist, and Lazala, I know your dad, you know, shout out to Big Perry, you know, who's also hurting too. We lost a friend, confidant, um, advocate in Mansfield, Frazier at age 78. So I understand that we got a show to do. We're going to get right into it. But I'm asking for a moment of silence for all three of these African-American gentlemen. So give us 30 seconds. A moment of silence for all three. It, this is, this shocked me. Um, just, you know, Mansfield has always been a mentor. Like, I trained him like a kind of mentor when I first got into the Greater Cleveland Association of Black Journalists. And 
you know, and it's always good to learn from the greats. So it just, you know, and, and shout out to his daughter. You know, and the Mansfield story is that he had a daughter that he never seen until maybe a couple of years ago, and when he found out, he embraced her with open arms. So, he got an ET. yeah, and he brought her to actually to one of the meetings that he had. So it was like, you know, refreshing, and he knew what it was. So he talked about it on his Facebook, and and shout out for him being at WATM iHeart Radio for when the North Coast Natural Solutions scandal hit. He had me come on there and talk about you know how people were rambling. Speaking of rambling, I'm going to say this. Now, I got to have an announcement because now there's some people that were upset about Wednesday's video when I took at um, Shore House Baptist Church. Was that this Wednesday? That was the last Wednesday, yes. Last, last Wednesday, yes. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this to everybody. Nobody tells Larry Gardner who to endorse. Ooh. First of all, second of all. And I'm trying to be nice because my guest is here and I ain't trying to cuss in front of her. But the thing about it is, is that I'm telling you right now, nobody tells Larry H. Gardner what the hell to do. I am not endorsing anybody. I don't go the way of Aaron Phillips. I do not go the way of Aaron Phillips. So I'm going to make my endorsement announcements close to the end of the show. And a lot of people are going to be either happy or upset. And I really don't give a damn. You don't tell me as a media person who to go for. I go for what God and my heart and the people need what tell me to go for. I don't listen to anybody but that. So you don't tell me what the hell to do. Period. All right. Now we, he meant that. He meant all of that. The too. word is saying it with my chest right about now. So he meant period. You know what? S speaking of candidates, uh, we got one in here. I'm going to let her chime in on some other things that have been going on. So T Rex. The human T race on the ones and twos. Please play the entrance music for this lovely queen right about now. So, the reason I'm playing the smooth, loving Miss Indian Ari, Ari, little things, because this woman wants to cause big things. She wants to be the, paint, the Maple Heights City Council president. She is running. She has been on the radio. She's been everything to everyone. Please welcome, not India already, but Miss Imani Kupri <laughs> in the building in the studio right now. Hey, Imani, hey, how you doing? Hey, y'all. Hey. 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 So tell me, Doing all the stuff that you've been doing. Why motivational speaker, you know, educated, all that. Why do you want to run for Maple High City Council President? We can keep it a thousand. Yeah. I love your show and um I just love the theme, Ain't Never Scared. Right. Don't stop being who you are, because I'm sitting here <laughs> number one. I wanna say that. Right. Um, but I first of all, thank you for the invitation to be here. Thank you to you and Miss Day. I love listening to the show. I love listening to your courageous voices and opinions. And to be honest with you, directly answering your question, politics is not something that I really intended to get into. It chose me. And I literally say that like right before COVID exploded last year, I was flying back to um, Cleveland from a speaking gig, a breakthrough speaking gig for me. And I was on the plane and I'm like, yeah, this is what I'm gonna be doing. I'm trying to get paid well and all this stuff. Like, then I said, well, God, you know, there's something else that you want me to do. In Cleveland, I mean, this mm -hmm. is my home. I was born in Bedford, grew up most of my first part of my childhood in Oak Ridge. Um, so I'm just like, is there something else you want me to do here? Like, because if it's not, maybe I'm gonna start putting together a relocation plan. And I swear to you, within a week of me making that prayer, I got a phone call from some people in my city who said, We've been watching you and the work that you do, mm -hmm. and we really are impressed. We feel like you have a lot you could offer Maple Heights. Would you consider running for office? If you do, we'll give you support. But our city needs what you're about. And I was kind of like, wait, what? Like, that's right. not really that God, You know, so um, I have a relative who is in politics in New York. He's mayor of Newburgh, New York. Shout out to my cousin, Mayor Tony Cardi. I called him and consulted with some other people that I trust. And he said, you know, if you prayed and God brought that to you, uh -huh. then maybe you should pay attention to it. How I got started in city council, if you decide to do this, you know, I'll, I'll be there and help you every step of the way. And so it really has been a journey with a lot of prayer and asking for help and guiding me to the right people and 
the right information. You know, I'm running against an incumbent, and this is my first time getting in politics, so there's a lot of learning curves that had to take. But that's the real 411. This is not something that Iman and Tafri was like, oh, yeah, I'm about to go. <laughs> right. Know, I just prayed, and I, I have found that when I pray and I'm obedient mm-hmm. to what comes up, right. things open up in a much greater way than I would have imagined. And I have the opportunity to serve in ways that I would not have necessarily Sorry. thought of initially mm-hmm. myself. So the, I'm, I'm hearing a, like there's a first time candidate in the Cleveland mayoral race who just did mm-hmm. uh, going up against an established kind of candidate in Kevin Kelly. So, you know, and the thing about it is like what I'm here from, the, you know, people talking about Justin He's inexperienced in politics. Do you get that too? You know, I haven't had a lot of people say that to me in like a, in a are you know what you're doing type of way. But I've had some questions. Just what's your experience and background? Do you feel ready? I do feel like I have experience that is valuable for the city and that would be an asset to me being council president. But one thing I can also tell you is that not to take away from anybody who's experienced in any field. But sometimes you need a different spirit, you need a different energy, mm-hmm. a different type of passion, mm-hmm. and another level of being open and coachable, coachable from your constituents on how to help bring something new. So when I got out and was canvassing to get on the ballot, one thing I heard from the residents is, you know, Maple Heights has a lot of people who really care about what's going on with the city. Mm-hmm. They want fresh ideas. They want fresh energy, more creativity, more engagement from their leadership, and not just around, you know, campaign time or certain people are very visible and then other people, you know, may not be as visible. So, um, you know, I I feel anything that I have done where it was a first for me before, Mm -hmm. I found when I bring the right spirit and I come to it trying to be a student, God gives me everything that I need to excel in that. So... That's because she's embracing the servant leadership. Right. Yeah. That's, That's exactly what's up. What that, 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 it sounds like it to me. Uh, anybody got any questions um, as far as, you know, you got one, Jay? Yeah. Blizzala? Well, actually, I want to know about your platform and what it is you want to do primarily once you become city council, city council, council president. president. Sure. So my platform is based on what I call the four E's, which is to engage, empower, Elevate and um, how do I get over this? Engage, empower, elevate, and energize. And so, when it comes to the city council president, the responsibilities of the city council president are to run the city council meetings, act as a liaison between um, the administration, council, and the mayor, mm-hmm. also between council representatives and members of the community. So, say for instance, if you have a complaint against your city council person, you would take that to your council president. I would address that with that person. Not also just in terms of, you know, reprimanding, but building relationships and like being a bridge. And so um, if you have been following the news about things in Maple Heights over the last year, you will know that we have made the news for some positive things and for some negative things, you know, like the Pride Revolution that failed several times in Maple Heights, I think, in the spring. That was introduced by Richard. Right? Yeah, and there was a lot of, um, what's the word I want to use? Pushback. I don't know if pushback is the word. There was a lot of vitriol and kind of chaos behind how those initial votes went. Mm-hmm. And some of those meetings, if you paused and listened, you know, got a little heated. And, you know, so the tone, it's the, it's the council president's job to set the tone of those council meetings and, you know, to also make sure that people are not crossing certain lines mm-hmm. in those meetings. Those are the people's meetings, mm-hmm. you know. So energizing it, 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 the part of my platform is like setting a different tone, raising the bar a little bit on the professionalism for the meetings. Not that every meeting is off the hook. I'm not trying to put that out there. Right. But there but, are some but it, that are. But, yes. it, but it can be. Yes. Yeah. So setting a higher bar for that. Also, you know, with my background in communications and marketing um, and journalism, I graduated from Kent State. Bonus rush, yay! Yeah. <laughs> Broadcast journalism, bachelor's, and my master's is in digital storytelling and marketing. I feel like where there's a gap in the city is being able to really push and promote 
the city council needed as being the people needed and getting them more involved. Yes. So if you have a population of almost, what, 23,000 people, mm -hmm. but only about 20 to 25 come out to the meeting, that's not bad. But that's imagine, not bad. right, but imagine how much we could move the, the needle mm -hmm. if yeah, we had more much, many more people. Yeah, and how, how much more accountability Yes. Would be on the table for those people who've been elected, and they would have to think about, you know what, I better really think about how I conduct myself mm -hmm. because there's many more constituents watching and participating. So that's the energized piece and part of the engagement piece on my platform. Engagement also, engagement empowerment also would be based towards young people and trying to get them more involved and give them spaces and places to use their voices, understanding that their voices matter, mm -hmm. and helping to create change. You know, we do have quite a few youth programs in Maple Heights, but again, because of some gaps in communication, not all the residents know about programs that are available. And to be honest, there's really no, that I can tell, let me not say that it's not there, but for my kind of initial learning mm -hmm. and observing and interacting, I think there are opportunities to create more space for young people to be heard and have their ideas involved in how we shape the next chapter for Maple Heights, like a youth council. Oh, um, yeah. Something like that, yes. you know, and then engage, empower. You know, the whole reason I'm running is because I'm really about just helping people tap into their courage and use their voice. Right. And um, that's really what I want to bring to the process of governing Maple Heights, make it more interesting, make it something that people are more excited about, that residents feel more connected with, you know, um, maybe create a campaign where I'm really canvassing all year to connect mm -hmm. with the residents yes. and having smaller community discussions, like, you know, uh, because I am an incumbent, I mean, a uh, new mm -hmm. person, new person. <laughs> running against an incumbent and still having to prove myself, you know, my campaign and fundraising is, uh, you know, I have to earn, earn everything. So my first meet and greet is at my house. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. In my driveway. Right. I have a pretty big backyard. You know, <laughs> I have a nice portable PA system set that up. And maybe about 15, 20 people came. And we had our chairs kind of like in a circle. And it just felt so cool to have like an informal discussion about who I am, what you care about, what you want to see change. But are you willing to move class, having the capacity to complain to help create the changes you want to see? Right. So um, that type of engagement I would like to also bring. And then all of that together, I feel like, will help elevate Maple Heights and the quality of life mm -hmm. in Maple Heights. But it really takes a community. And, and the missing mm -hmm. piece, I think, is somebody to help galvanize people to understand yep. you have to own your democracy. That's right. right. And if you look at what's happening on the local level, on the <laughs> national level, right. mm -hmm. you know, I probably should be paying a little bit more attention to the youth than I have been, but I've been so busy. Um, It'll but, make you cry, girl. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> on your campaign. But right. the point is, you know, our democracy is like dangling. It's mm -hmm. being tested. That's right. And I'm really listening to you here. I'm hoping that you inspire more people who are motivational and think in more spiritual ways to get involved in government because yes. that's probably our missing piece right yeah. now. All right. So your incumbent, um, he's been, he or she, he, he, he's been in that seat for how long? This will be a second term if he's elected, so like four years starting. Okay. And he was a youth council person for District 4 okay. prior, where current councilwoman is uh, Jay Anderson. Oh, I know very well. Mm -hmm. I know very well. Mm -hmm. So how is your relationship with um, Mayor Blackwell? It's very good. And um, he's a great man. He's awesome. Yeah. And I, I would very much embrace the opportunity to work with her. And honestly, I have made the determination based on the things that I've learned as incumbent mm -hmm. and just my passion to want to serve like where I am um, regardless of the outcome I want to be more involved with I know Richard too. doing something in the city he's a good man Richard yeah mm -hmm. he is a very good guy so uh, Mayor Blackwell has done a lot for Maple Heights right. she's turned Maple Heights around man she's brought a lot of retail whether it's big box or um, you know whether it's local but she's actually done a lot to change um, how Maple Heights looks. You know, and last night there was a State of the City presentation that she did and also State of the uh, School 
district that the superintendent did. There are also people running for um, the school board during right. this election cycle, too. So their presentations were very good last night, but I love, you know, what the mayor shared, mm -hmm. the highlight of some awesome things that have happened during her time in office. We're out of fiscal emergency yep. in less than five years. Yep. That's huge. That she is she huge. came into office and there was like, what, I think a 2.7 or 2.9 million dollar deficit. deficit. Mm -hmm. Our general fund is up to like 6 million now. Okay. Wow. She's yeah. done a lot. She, she has, has done, done a lot. lot. Yeah. I'm, shout out to Mayor Blackwell. I, every time I see her, she always smiles, always smiles. hugs, everything. She, it, it's, you know, when you have, when you are blessed, then it shows on your face that you can bless other people. So but when you follow the mindset of the model servant leadership, right, servant leadership. That that's what you get. I it think it's about the people. It's I think it's lost on the city of Cleveland. <clears throat> Just leaving it alone. I, don't, don't go there. I am going there. <laughs> And back in there I'm again. Gonna sit, I'm just going to sit here and, and watch. Right. I'm gonna be quiet. The queen's going to be quiet. Too. I'm going to let Larry have the mic. Uh, so the thing is, is that you are, I mean, apparently you've been fundraising and stuff like that. You do volunteers. How can people volunteer for your campaign? So, you know, I'm always on social media, especially since I'm still healing up with my ankle thing. Shout out to everybody and you, Larry, for all the prayers and love over these last few months. That was the whole new Twitter thing. But if you're interested in volunteering or helping with the campaign, please follow our social media. Imani Capri for Council President on Facebook. Imani Capri, the number four Council President on Instagram. You can DM me. You can email us at friends of Imani Capri at Gmail. Um, you know, I've been blessed. Like we've been able to get yards, get some yards on. We're starting to build out, have flyers. I'm having a meet and greet on Sunday at Sam Silk's Lounge from two to four p.m. Don't hey. worry, it ends when the Browns. Paint oh, just starts. keep going. Just keep going. Stop! <laughs> stop! Stop! Stop, we had a rough loss last week. Rough. But rough is an understatement. You know what? We'll talk about that. Yeah, we ain't talking about the Browns this week. We're going to talk about John Gruden's emails. It might be, bring the whole in it. Little weird. She's talking tough. Right. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Yo, I'm uh, talking real tough. Like, crazy. It's Jay birthday. Let the Pittsburgh get a, a victory this week. Uh -huh. Oh, whatever, T. <laughs> <team. laughs> right. T-Rex signing off. I'm out of here. <laughs> Thanks. And happy birthday. <laughs> Thank happy you. Happy Libra season. My mom's a Libra. We've been celebrating all month. What, what's your birthday? 10 6, October 6th. Mine's is October 9th. Hey. Yep, we good mm. people. Yep. Mm. So Until you piss us well, off. Shout out to your mom. Is, you. How's your your mom's been helping you out a lot, right? She's my mom. I call my mom the general because oh. she used to be in the military. Ooh. She's been in several war zones. My mom is a real soldier. Like she shows up. What and gets part? Her what what branch? Army. Are, oh, she. She really is. She <laughs> is a soldier. I, I yeah, shout out to your mom for real. And she was in. She did a, a year in Iraq. Oh. She was in um, Somalia during the Black Hawk Down. That happened right out of somewhere where she was stationed. Wow. She was there. She was in Korea for a year. Now she's a yoga instructor and like personal vegan chef. So, and helping caretake for our, my grandmother, but she's been dope. Like, shout out to mommy when you see this. She helped me canvas. Really? My mom does a yoga class, a donation-based yoga class at Farmer Jones in that, like, grassy area next mm. to the market. And I've started going out there and just uh, shout out to Farmer Jones, too, because they mm. let me set up a little table. And, you know, okay. Hey, come say hi to Candidate Capri. Wow. Right. So, my mom is... is whatever is needed not even to mention like i've had been in the hospital three times in like what july august september for a week each mm. time wow and my mom was just between caretaking with my grandmother during the day coming and doing what i needed or whatever at the hospital and then checking on me when i got home like she's the real mvp and the real deep, the real general did she retire from the military she did not. She got out early because it was, like, way too stressful. Okay. But she did put right. in, I think, like, what, maybe 10, 12 years? It's a long time. Yeah, yeah. my cousin, he, he is a, a sergeant major. Okay. This is it for him. Mm -hmm. That's the highest rank you can go. Mm 
Sergeant yeah. Major? Yes. And he's going to retire, I think, two more years, I think. Okay. Yeah. So he, so he probably, I'm, they probably crossed paths, I'm sure. Right. Shout out to all veterans. Yeah, my oh, dad, Semper Fi, do or die. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what's up. And, and, and so you been, uh, been, I mean, the, the hospital stays. It's probably been rough on your campaign, so your mom's been pretty much taking care of that. And you well, have, nah. <laughs> she she, like, she really take care of the campaign, but um, what I can say is that sometimes what we think is a setback mm-hmm. is like set up for a launch. So, you know, in the beginning, I was really kind of concerned about how would this affect my campaign because mm-hmm. I can't get out and be as mobile as mm-hmm. I need to be. But God. And awesome people who are helping with my campaign. I do have some people who are kind of volunteering to be my street feet. Mm-hmm. And I know how to use social media. And A I've been lot. using that. I have also, as my healing is moving in the right direction, and I got the okay from my doctors about what I can and cannot do, mm-hmm. I've started getting back out. So, you know, I'm here. I got, yeah, I got you got here. here. I set yeah. my foot up. That's a nice hallway, though. So, <laughs> man, listen. I was like, uh, she didn't park on the side. Did you park on the side? I gave you instructions um, to park on the yeah, side. Yeah, I came right where I needed to. I, oh, okay. I took an Uber and then I'll be picked up. At okay. The end of this. But um. Okay. You know, one thing I want people to know about me, like, I, I'm at peace. Whatever God's will is with this election, although I'm, I claim victory. When I start something, I intend to finish it strong. That's right. Exactly. When I was dealing with what I was dealing with in the hospital, and I still have quite a ways to go to fully heal but one thing i i said was that um i made the ballot that was a lot of hard work yes in a short period of time mm-hmm. and i still had my ankle stuff starting then i was out there like with this hole starting in my ankle and a staph infection oh know, wow signatures. wow so yeah. it was like yeah, god was looking out for you yeah for and it didn't spread that was the your key. work will yeah. not be in vain right so you know, some of my family was kind of like, well, if you decide to slow down on your campaign or not do it, like, you know, it's okay. You got to put your health first. And I'm listening. I'm praying. What I got in prayer was to keep going. Mm-hmm. That's and right. So, That's right. You know, yeah. I, I want to show people that the type of person I am, like, if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. And if I start something, I see it through. I didn't want to have any regrets that, okay, even though I had this health challenge, I didn't give it my all. I just... I didn't want to just sit at home and put my foot up and not work social media or not not do anything. And for all. those people that put their trust to sign their signature to get on the ballot, I feel like I owe them, mm-hmm. you know, effort that I could put forward. And so what's really um, interesting is that I've been getting feedback from different places and spaces mm-hmm. to keep going, keep doing what I'm doing, that I'm making some noise, that people are paying attention. So um, keep running. Keep, keep running, running. Keep running. Keep running. Don't so, don't stop. Yeah. You, Delay you. doesn't mean deny. So, right. Keep what running. So, exactly. Uh, so your the camp so the election is November second. Yes. It's like everything goes down November second mm-hmm. right now. Is there early voting in the Maple Heights? Early voting can happen at the Board of Elections yeah. even for Maple Heights, but you have to go there. Yeah, you go, you to, go the to the Board of Elections. So everything BOE. goes to Cuyahoga County Board of Elections. So, yeah, if you are early voting, go ahead and vote early. And November 2nd is general for everybody, everything, and everyone. So, again, social media sites so people can either volunteer or donate money to this young lady yes please and let me tell you like your money is going towards flyers like food at the meet and greets um yard sign i mean it's going towards reaching the people so again you can find us on facebook imani capri for council president instagram imani capri the number four council president uh, cash app is the dollar sign Friends of Imani Capri and oh PayPal. I forgot about that. PayPal. Friends of Imani Capri. Mm-hmm. I have an act blue link too that's in the bio on all the social media. I'm trying to get I have a website that I'm actually trying to launch and the only thing that we're trying to work out is all right. that, all right. that up there. All right. Speaking speaking of elections, Jay, uh, you wanna announce what's going on on the twenty first? 
on the 21st of October, we are bringing the mayoral candidates, Justin Bibb and Kevin Kelly, um, to Ward 2. It is a collaborative um, town hall forum between um, Ward 1 and Ward 2, which are the two largest voting wards in the city of Cleveland. Um, doors open at 5. The debate will begin at 6 and will be going until 7.30. It is going to be at the Sanctuary Baptist Church. I don't know the address exactly, Larry, if you could just chime in with that for 4004 me. 4004 East on the 31st Street, Cleveland, Ohio. Four four one zero five. Now this is the time. If if you look at all the, the debates that have gone on um, in the mayoral um, race, they've all been on the west side of Cleveland, um, or this, virtual. Or virtual. Um, this came to me, and I called on Andre White and said, "Hey, listen, we need to bring them to." Our communities. They need right. to come to the east side of Cleveland. So if you're in wards three, you're in wards four, five, you're in ward six, you, ward all ten, the, all of the, the east, east side, side wards, wards, you need to be at this forum on October the 21st. Um, yours truly will be the moderator um, for this um, mayoral forum. Um, and this is your time to have your say. This is your time to s ask the questions that you want to get answered by our next leader in the city of Cleveland. If you don't get out and ask the questions or come to the meetings, nothing's going to change. And I was listening to um, Councilwoman Samples down in Akron today, and she brought up a very valid point. You know, we can talk and we can say all this stuff on social media. You know, we can post all this stuff on the gram, Facebook. You know, we can go live. But until we get up off our asses and put some action into motion, Nothing is going to change. We've exactly. got to stop sitting on the sidelines. You got to come off the bench and you got to get in the game and you got to play. So this is your time to play October 21st doors open at 5 PM. We will be providing, um, hand sanitizer and, mask. um, mask, um, for the event. And it's at sanctuary Baptist church, Larry. And what is the address again? Four zero zero four East 131st Cleveland, Ohio, four, four, one Oh five. Going to your point before we go to break, Jay, of getting off the bench, Imani is playing hurt. Period. Yes. She's so she got an ankle. She's still out here campaigning and competing. So there's no excuse for anybody who's well bodied and able bodied not to get off their ass and do what they supposed to do. Because this young because this queen right here, right now, she playing hurt. Period. Point blank. She like one of the defensive players for the Browns. You're like, I ain't trying to be funny or nothing. Oh, but boy. it's real. It's it is very real. Right. It's very the Browns. It's very real. <laughs> right. But so. Yeah, action is, is, is what we need. It takes a community. We can't sit back. It does. And, right. And say, okay, I voted for you. Now you got it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And, and that's what we're we're accustomed to now. Right. That's so, the mindset that we have. So we're going to break. This is K. John, one of my favorite songs. We'll be right back. We're going to talk about the John Gruden emails and the Dave Chappelle backlash on the headline I will be back on NerveDJs.com www.nrv we get on your nerves we'll be right back sometimes it feels like like everything is passing me by every now and then it feels like my ship has gone and sailed away, but I, I gotta be strong, gotta hold on, it won't be too long, now the tide is coming in, I see the waves flowing, they're on the ocean, I know my ship is coming in. Just past the horizon, and right where the sky ends. It's out there on the ocean, no, my ship is coming in. So don't leave me hanging. I've been waiting too long for this moment. My ship has finally come. I will travel to the seven. As 
like fighting with gravity and it's bringing me down if this world is really round then tell me it's just enough for you to come around My dad was a police officer and firefighter. My mom's a social worker. I'm Justin Bibb. I lost a cousin to murder. Crime and violence threaten us all. We need real public safety and equal justice. My safety plan will improve police training, add mental health support, move more police out into Cleveland's neighborhoods, and guarantee accountability with citizen oversight. Real safety and equal justice. It's a fight we can win. I'm Justin Bibb. Paid for by Neighbors for Justin Bibb. Hey everybody, this is Lisala Piri asking you to tune in every Wednesday to the Headline Eye at 6 p.m. on WNRV 108.1. This is WNRV 108.1. Are you a DJ, radio show, music artist, or a podcaster and you've thought about having your own mobile app? BB Mobile Apps could be the solution. They specialize in creating apps with live audio streams, mixes, music, and songs. You can integrate your social media, videos, blogs, and most importantly, send push notifications to your followers. For more information, bvmobileapps.com or on social media at BV Mobile Apps. That's B as in business, V as in victory, bvmobileapps.com. Hey, everybody, it's the queen with the gold mic from Headline Eye. And you can catch me every Wednesday from 6 until 8 p.m. on WNRV 108.1. This is WNRV 108.1. Let me put you in the grown man business. If you're ready for a grown man, lay back and get this grown man business. Sexy 
We're back on the headline, I on Nerve DJs, www.wnrv1081.com. Nerve DJs, when we get on your nerves, that was Brian McKnight, grown man business. You know, he got, you know, you playing with them little boys, you ain't got no time for no grown man business. That's correct. Speak And grown woman business, because we got Imani Capri, who's running for Maple Heights City Council President, doing her grown woman business, you know, on the ones and twos. So, before we go in any further about... John Gruden and Dave Chappelle and all the emails versus the LGBT community and everything else like that. There was a debate on Monday night on live stream between Justin Bibb. Idea stream. Idea stream, Justin Bibb and Kevin Kelly. Um, by the way, there is also, shout out to Russ Mitchell at WKYC, WKYC is live streaming another town hall via um, just virtual with Justin Bibb and Kevin Kelly, sponsored by the NAACP, as I heard last night. So that's at 7.30, so I know people want to cut away to that. But That's tonight, That right? is tonight. Mm-hmm. That is tonight. Right. So I'm going to do my grades. So if anybody wants to chime in, if any, Lizala, did you see the debate? I did. You did? I did. Okay. So I'm going to do the grades. So, Jay, I'm going to start with... The newcomer to politics, Justin Bibb. So, Jay, what was your grade for Justin? B. B? All right. So, Lazala? Yeah, I give him a B plus. Yeah. B plus? So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let Amani go ahead. Do you want to chime in on here? What grade did I you I don't because I didn't see it. I was okay. working on my own campaign. Right, so exactly. Yeah, okay. it, it's, no, cool. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. your job, honey. It's cool. That's an honest answer. All right, honest answer. All right, I'm going to give Justin an A-. minus, And the reason I'm giving him an A- minus is because of this. I'm giving Justin an A- minus is because even though it didn't look like he wowed anybody, you know, the issue 24, which is always dicey for anybody, you know, you know, citizens policing the police, pretty much that actually is on the ballot. He didn't do anything to hurt himself. He didn't do anything to – he didn't do – and not really to hurt himself. A little bit, but to some people, but – Listen, he didn't. He he sounded poised and confident. That's the one thing that you wanted. He did sound poised and confident. Mm-hmm. He needs to learn a little bit more about Cleveland history, about Cleveland's political history. Uh-huh. He didn't have the recall on some facts that he really could have won people over with, and that's why I say B plus. Agreed. And not more. Agreed. And Agreed. so if he had had those facts, he really would have won people over. But can I jump ahead for one second? Right. The issue is issue 24. And Agreed. the people who are against it are going to come out to vote. We need to do whatever we can to get the people who are for it to come out and vote. Because the people who support Justin, I am very concerned about them actually showing up to the polls and marking the right 
Right. Uh, uh, you agree. They're, they're going to stay home. Right. Is what my fear. And I Agreed. hope you don't. I hope you people come out and do the right thing for the city. So I'm going. So we're going next to city councilman president Kevin Kelly. His grade. Lazala, I want you to start first. What was Kevin Kelly's grade in your eyes? C. Are you being generous with the C, or are you just saying C? I'm saying C. Okay. J, your grade for Kevin Kelly. C minus. D. I'm, okay, thank uh, you. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, I, I'm saying D, and the reason <laughs> why is because of the simple fact of the matter is, is that you, being the incumbent, being in politics, sounded like you was running for the first time in your life any damn way. I, I, you know why I gave him a C minus? Why? Because he was a D. <laughs> Borderline <laughs> F. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. <laughs> but when I seen him at Happy's birthday party, baby, listen, that moved the needle for me. The only Y'all see him? Listen. He was at Happy's birthday party. I heard, listen, the reason I gave him. He was over on Harvard. Listen. At Happy's birthday party. I don't give it. some points with that? A little bit. Nah. Because nobody, he was in the hood. I, be, no, because somebody brought him there. He ain't come there by his damn self. And the thing about it, it don't was, matter. He was posted up, and then he he moved the needle a little bit for me too. This is probably what got him to the C minus because he was at an F, and, and then he moved to a D. When I seen him at Skeets, that moved him to a D. And then when I seen him at Happy well, Party, Blaine brought his behind his. But it don't matter. But when, when Blaine Griffin taking him places, oh, wait, he got a dog in the race. I, uh, he, got, he, he got a dog Council in the race. President, that's why he's trying to move up the ladder. But when I seen him go to Happy's birthday party, and I seen him posted up taking pictures, baby, I said he a C minus. That's funny because that actually drops points for me. C minus. Uh, I, you know what the thing? About you know that? why C minus? Because he putting in the effort. And if people don't really see what's really going on with him coming into the community now at this point. And I'm being sarcastic. Okay, thank you. I'm being very sarcastic and I'm being okay. funny. Okay. But people don't always see it that way. But this is a true tale of how disconnected Kevin yeah, Kelly yeah. really is with the communities in on the east side of Cleveland. Okay. He's never been on the east side of Cleveland like he's been on the west side of Cleveland. Mm-hmm. So when I do that, it's funny. Right. And I do it because I want to see that people are really paying attention. Pay attention, people. You ain't seen him before now. And I'm not and I'm not endorsing a candidate either way. I'm not for Justin. I'm not for Kevin. I'm straight down the middle. I won't know who I'm voting for until I get in that box on November the 2nd. Let me make that very clear. I won't know who I'm voting for until November the 2nd when I get in that box. But what I'm going to do, as long as I'm on this air, I'm going to give you the narratives that I see and hope mm-hmm. that you can understand right. what I'm trying to tell Thank you. Because I want you to make your own decision for yourself as to who needs to be the next leader of Cleveland. Because Cleveland is on the cusp of change. Well, it's on the cusp. And we can either make the change happen ourselves and change our democracy because whoever is going to go in that seat, you still got to hold them accountable. You still got to hold them accountable to what you are expecting of them. Do not expect them to get in the seat and do what is best for you. You as the resident and the constituents of the city of Cleveland will still need to remind them, I put you there to do a job. And that job is to do what is best for me, the people that you are elected to serve we pay your salary by these tax dollars because we live in the city of cleveland so people please understand that when i say something and the reason why i'm not endorsing any candidate this time around in the mayoral election because i said it before and i'll say it again i'm not too comfortable with either one of them but i've got to stop and take my emotions out of it and I've got to say, you know what? I got to think about the community. I got to think about what's best for everybody besides me. Let me carve out my emotions, put them on the shelf, and do what's right by the people. So I'm going to continue with things that are happening, things that are going on, but I'm not going to be endorsing any candidate for the mayoral race. And Jeez. best of luck to all of them. She's not. I'm going to announce mine at the end of the close to the end of this show. That's the, uh, the one of the biggest surprises. Of that because usually I never endorse anybody. No, he doesn't. God notes. But the thing is, is that it's about time because 
I'm sick of the. Uh, um, I'm here for it. I'm, 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 I'm sick here of for the, it. I'm sick of the. I'm, I'm gonna just say this. Excuse me. Pardon my French, money. I'm sick of the foolery and fuckery going on in the city of Cleveland right there the now. The foolery and fuckery going on in the city there. of Cleveland right now. I ain't because of the blurry. simple fact of the matter is, is that. Listen, Maple Heights is a wonderful mayor in the Blackwell and got people like Imani running in the city in the city of Maple Heights. Cleveland keep messing around. A lot of people are gonna go to Maple Heights because they sick and tired of the fuckery and foolishness too. Period point blank. Or go to Shaker. Or go to uh Bedford, Independence, wherever where they can get justice. Because right now but, but here, there is none in the city of Cleveland right now. But here's what I will say too, Larry, that the people the constituents in the city have got to do their part. We can no longer sit on the bench and blame the politicians. Right. Come on. We can't do that anymore. We keep saying we want change. Then be the change that you expect and the That's change right. that you want. Stop playing these games. Stop thinking that you don't have to do anything once you put these people in these seats. That's right. That's where we mess up at. Right. We don't hold them accountable. And what has happened is they become complacent. Right. So now those that hold them accountable or hold their feet to the fire, we're the troublemakers because right. we don't want to be quiet. Right. So, we don't want to sit on the plantation and not voice our opinions. I'm the very one that's going to run away and say, hey, look at him, master. We got a problem. We got a problem. And we got to stop thinking that once we put these politicians in these seats, that they're going to do what's best for us. That's right. Remember, I always tell you, they suffer from the with them, the what's in it for me syndrome. I, th yep. I think I've seen it in the endorsements for Kevin Kelly. The thing about it is, I Whoop. see, I, 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 let's, let's, let's go there. Let's oh, go boy. there. All right, let me just say this. Now, Blaine wants to be city council president. He That's got a, he got a dog in the race. Right. Um, Got a dog in the race. Yvonne and Kevin Conwell, they're going to do what they're going to do because they're quote-unquote loyal. Unfortunately, there's one African-American, and I had an argument with one of his friends last night. I'm going to eat this cookie while he make this announcement. So, Bashir Jones, <laughs> thank you for blocking me after I had, like, the blocking me. He blocked on, you? On, on my Facebook what? because of the simple fact of the matter is the reason that you were in the race in the first place was to take the black vote away, some of the black vote away from Zach Reed. Mission accomplished. He ain't get to the general. Yo ass ain't neither. So, the thing about it is all this set up, was to make sure that Kevin Kelly skirted his way in. The problem is that I have with you is that you're an alpha and just as an alpha too and you never, ever, ever go against your brother. Nigga! Now. So how you really feel? Yeah. Hmm. Let's go to the... Um, that cookie break was good. Mm-hmm. How you really feel there? Can I just say something to that? Go ahead. Okay. Well, Brother Bashir, you knew better and you knew that there's there's a there's this bond between you and your bros you know this already and and bashir baby you 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 should have stayed on the porch with the little dogs because you wasn't ready for the big dogs you should stay on the porch you wasn't and for and now we can have a conversation me and him he can sit right across this table but for now the part that really unnerves me about brother bashir is the fact that he said the bougie black people? Oh, I'll be bougie. Didn't vote for him. I'll be bougie. Then. So what you saying is, brother I mean, Bashir, come on. is that your bougie black people mm -hmm. are the problem? So in other words, bruh, you were sitting here playing on the emotions of what we call our street. Family. So Hello. you was trying to separate black people from black people. Yeah. So you dividing, brother dividing Bashir. For your you divide and conquer, brother Bashir. Because as long as you was running around in Ward 7 and you was doing these sleepovers on the corners in your ward, you wanted everybody around you, whether they were bougie or not. But when you get up here and you don't win this race to be the mayor of Cleveland because you said had the bougie black people did what they were supposed to do, you would be in the race for mayor. Bruh, uh-uh, wrong answer. No, you would not have been. I did donate. I did actually when he was down there on the sleepover. I donated a couple of the things of water. But see, that there. just tells me your mindset is you didn't care who you you used to what you needed to use to get done whatever it is you needed to get done. So you were using 
all of the people in Ward 7, whether they were bougie or whether they were ghetto or whether they were monkeys swinging around on the tree, as you've always said, and you said it on your one of your lives, but you forgot, bruh, but you forgot, brother Bashir, mm. if black women ain't had your back, bruh, now mm. what? Whoa. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get well, let's get to the lovely emails by former Las Vegas Raiders um, head coach John Gruden. John Gruden. <laughs> has a string of emails spanning back to 2018, going back 10 years. He resigned as coach because they were not only racist, but homophobic and things of that nature. Now, Imani, mm -hmm. make sure you, if you say something bad, make sure you hit the delete button. You can. <laughs> What's your comment on I didn't say on anything. It? <laughs> I didn't say anything. What I would say is that, first of all, I'm a very honest person. Uh -huh. I'm a journalist like you. Right. And so I don't talk about stuff that I really don't know about. Right. right. That's number one. I don't pretend to know things I don't, number one. Number two, I really agree with what Jay said as far as the people have to get involved. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The people have to get involved, but I think, you know, elected officials and those who are seeking to be public servants need to also realize that the people may need us to help them understand the process. Mm. To make the process less intimidating. Right. Um, that's what I have to say. And, you know, to all the other comments and things that are going on with the race in Cleveland, I got my blinders on. <laughs> right. But what I would say is, is that I think in everything that you do, and especially if you are putting yourself in a place and platform where you are saying that you want to serve people, you have to be very mindful that you are thinking of all the people. Yeah. Yep. Right. So yes. you can't. What I take away from your comment um, about his comments is that you can't isolate groups like that. You know, if, mm -hmm. if you don't, yeah. if you don't get a certain demographic support, then maybe look at where did your campaign need to beef it up, or look at did your you camp. Miss inter did you miss interacting with a particular group and finding out what they care about, or you know, like isolating people? We are in such a time. Where like divisive politics is not gonna move us right. forward. So trying to find where can we focus on some things we can unite around. You know, I my prayer is to be able to keep the goal in mind and, yeah. and steer as clear as I can of the politics in politics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what it is. So, politics. You know, shout out to to voters. Shout out to candidates who have the courage to run. But keep your motives pure. Yeah. Because if, if they're not, you know, people people know. What's, they see right through it. Right. Authenticity resonates with people. Mm-hmm. And so, you know. Um, your mask that, will fall that, off eventually. Yeah, that's all I. The mask does fall off. Oh, can I just say this one thing? Go ahead. Black women. You cannot leave us out of the equation. Never. Any candidate. <laughs> any candidate. <laughs> We are the largest voting population. Thank you. And we we move the needle for the Democratic Party for Joe Biden and yes. Kamala Harris to be in office. Yes. And you, what have we gotten? And and right. So, uh, nice. you know, I, I am Ooh. proud to say I will I would like to just interject this if it's okay. That's fine. You know, in being a woman, African American woman, first time getting in politics, running against an incumbent. There were a lot of things in the beginning that felt like very intimidating. It is. And I am happy to say that my first endorsement came from the Black Women's Political Action Committee. Oh. Shout out to them, man. Yes. They always come through. Um, you cannot leave black women out of the equation. You can't. Point blank. The end. I'm also happy to say that I got an endorsement from the Cleveland Stonewall Democrats. That's what's up. And I have a pending application with um the young black democrats I oh think i'll hear from them tomorrow but that's know. uh what's his name right young black yeah democrats, um, yeah um, what's his uh I'll free, uh, god it escapes me his mom's I'll, I'll, a, his his mom's a judge brian um uh, seekers yeah yeah yeah, yeah, brian, Sigers. yeah. I was so, you know be careful how you use your mouth and i it's somebody somebody <laughs> said to me uh, recently, I don't remember who I was talking to, but I said, you know what? I'm being very mindful of my words because if I ever have to eat them again, I want them to taste good. That's right. So, like mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle is doing, but he, Man, I don't even care right now for real. What about the, uh, 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 okay. Uh, okay, you going to Dave Chappelle? Yeah, we going to Dave Chappelle. Okay. I, 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 I listen. Dave's a comedian. He has no 
Um, he's un- he's unfiltered. Wait, did, did everyone at this table see the Netflix special? I saw some of it. I okay. fell asleep on it. I saw some of it too. Okay, not the whole thing. Mm-mm. I always see. I saw Sticks and Stones before that. Yeah. Right, but this one was different. That's so, so what's your take on it, Lizala? Okay, so, um, I think that what I heard Dave saying is that he is a human having a human experience, just like we all are. So we're kind of all going through this new changes, new times, new everything together. The establishment and everyone kind of punches down on black people and when mm-hmm. he says anything they're like quit punching down on other communities and he's saying quit punching down on me and on my people and he calls my people comedians and he calls my people black people so he's talking about more groups than just black folks and then what I also hear him saying is um, the cancel culture is basically killing people's livelihoods and lives. It's not just ending a career, it's ending a life. Mm-hmm. And there are people who have had terrible outcomes for mm-hmm. themselves and made horrible choices with and I don't just mean they said the wrong thing. I mean maybe they did take their life after some brouhaha on Twitter, after Instagram came after them. So he's saying, yo, let's chill with the cancel culture. And let's kind of talk to each other and listen to each other. And let's stop letting the powers that be divide us. Right. Which is what you were saying to Bashir also, which I think, you know, but he's like, we are being divided. What I think is sad (laughs) is that people hear snippets of what he said and they say, okay, he is just being out of line. Mm -hmm. They're not even giving him the benefit of doubt of listening to his message. And so... Like, we can cancel him. He was canceled before. After he left the $50 million, he had to come back or else his money would be gone, right? Like, the money the he's Chappelle already amassed. Well, yeah. he, he canceled himself. No, no, no. What I'm saying, but also, they made him come back to work. Right. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. did not want to come back to work. Mm-mm. And so this is what happens when you force a man to do something he doesn't want to do to begin with. He speaks his mind. Are you going to say what he's going to say? And he's also saying, let's equalize things. Let's stop being unkind to each other. Let's stop taking away people's careers. He is unbossed and unbothered. Because walking away from a show is one thing, but then having it be out there that like you're doing all these things with your life that you might not be doing, Mm -hmm. that's what damaged him. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, Dave's crazy. Oh, maybe we should talk to Dave. Dave's on drugs. Do we really? And he he just could have been at a point in his life where he just really wanted the time to figure out who he was. And what he wanted was to get away from that. he didn't like the way they were acting on his show. Right. Really? Right. He, he, so someone laughed a little too hard at some of his jokes and he thought maybe they weren't like maybe they were actually racist and maybe they weren't laughing with him. But at him? Right. Right. Well, so I kind of I kind of kind of heard and I've read some of the reviews um it, w- pertaining to what Lazala just said. And it is he's right about the cancel culture. Mm-hmm. Where did these people come from? Why are we so quick to just say, oh, let's can- cancel somebody because of something that we feel like we don't like? We're all entitled to our own opinion, whether you like it or not. That's what makes us a democracy. That is why we are able to voice our opinions and our concerns. So I ride with David Chappelle because he does have a right to voice his opinions and voice his concerns. People need to stop being so and sense being sensitive to what people are saying just because i don't always agree with you doesn't mean i don't like you doesn't mean i don't see your point of view your point of view is just not my point of view because i see things through a different lens than you may see them through so let's just agree to disagree you're entitled to your thoughts i'm entitled to my thoughts we can still be adults and keep it moving that's what makes the world go round we're to the point now in this country to where we are one-sided it has to be one way and that's it. We don't get to have on different things. We have to have the same opinion because that's what makes everybody conform. We we need to stop conforming to having one opinion. We all see things differently. We're not you can't keep brainwashing us. So let me ask you a question. I'm gonna play devil's advocate a little bit. A lot of folks are like, okay, um, what Dave is doing is hurting the LGBTQ community. His comments are literally causing people to die. He's promoting a point of view that causes people to lose their livelihood and their lives. So I'm wondering what the response is to that. He's a comedian. Right. 
He's a comedian. Right. He is a comedian. Okay, okay, so what I'm saying is when the comedian is putting out ideas that hurt people, He's a comedian. He's he accepted or don't. He's a comedian. Funny. He's having a joke. And trust me, I don't have anything against the LGBTQIA community because a lot of them are friends of mine. But people take things way out of context. All right. So let Imani, let's get your perspective on what is going on back and forth. What What do you think? Yeah, I think this is really interesting. I still have to watch the documentary, uh -huh. but um. In general, I would say, or not the documentary, a comedy special. In general, I would say there is there is validity to elements of both arguments. Right. In one sense that like we are not all going to have the same opinion, same thoughts, same feeling. That's given. Mm -hmm. right? We do live in a democracy with First Amendment, mm -hmm. free speech, mm -hmm. all that. However, at the same time, the other side of the coin is that there are consequences what we say <sighs> so i think when you have someone yeah. like when you have someone like dave Chappelle, who is in the business of entertainment however he has a massive platform what i'm concerned about as someone who says that they love black people and they're fighting for black people does that encompass all black people and if it does how can you use your platform maybe more in in service of helping to bring some awareness around these issues. I heard Roland Martin do an interview with a gentleman. Uh, his last name is Edwards. I think he's the, the head of the Black National Justice Coalition. They do a lot of work for LGBTQ plus IA people. And he was basically saying that, you know, he don't want to necessarily cancel uh, Dave Chappelle but to deepen the dialogue to understand when you get up there and make certain content about this community, especially when a time when black transgender women are killed at a much higher rate than any other demographic, you have to understand that that's having impact in terms of what people think may be okay for culture. Uh, so um, I, that's my personal perspective. Right. I don't think that you can ignore that, you know? Right. And we also get to a place in space, and to be honest with you, you know, a, another thing that we didn't talk about in my background uh, and I'm proud to say this. People may have mixed opinions about it, but I don't regret my work in working with the Mute R. Kelly movement and being the Cleveland coordinator for that. We as a culture, especially African Americans, have the opportunity to like raise the bar on some things. And raising the bar is not necessarily like, I'm trying to shut down your freedom of speech or your ability to be creative. But when are we going to get past First of all, I have some honest dialogue about the ways mm. in which we abuse, oppress, and play out post-traumatic slave right. syndrome with one another, right. culturally. Right. And that's an inside conversation that might not be for everybody. But we, we, we have to raise the bar higher because it's our people that are dying at a higher rate. So there is a fine line, I think, that needs to be established between... How far do we go with our comedy? And if we're going to go this way with our comedy, then are, are you uh -huh. also using your platform to balance that out in, yeah. in other ways, is my perspective. All right. We're going to go to break. Okay. One thing about this is um, um, one of my favorite songs. But before I do that, I'm going to say, I mean, Dave Chappelle is a comedian. He doesn't have a decision maker. And listen, he ain't do nothing illegal. We'll be right back on The Nerve. DJ's the headline. I will be right back. This is WNRV.
take some time just to be thankful that I had days full of you. Just be my lover, boy, you lead me to paradise. Grab a glass of wine, light a candle, and settle in for the best slow jams to set the soundtrack for your bedtime on Sunday Silhouettes. With DJ Shotty Shot. So be there from 8 to 10 p.m. Two hours of love on WNRV. Hi, this is Marissa, and you can catch me every Wednesday on the Headline Eye at 6 p.m. on WNRV 108.1. My dad was a police officer and firefighter. My mom's a social worker. I'm Justin Bibb. I lost a cousin to murder. Crime and violence threaten us all. We need real public safety and equal justice. My safety plan will improve police training, add mental health support, move more police out into Cleveland's neighborhoods, and guarantee accountability with citizen oversight. Real safety and equal justice. It's a fight we can win. I'm Justin Bibb. Paid for by Neighbors for Justin Bibb. This is WNRV 108.1. Don't concern me, so forget it, yeah. little midget. My mind on seven digits. Before I pay, heaven skies to visit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pulling all stops, locking down all spots, saying you, you can't, can't front. front. So uh -huh. from this day forth, you know I'm all about heat. And what I do, be the major lead. That's why your girlfriend's paging me. All right, we're back with My Way by Usher. We're doing it my way here on the, on the headline eye. Uh, our guest Imani Capri. I just got to introduce the introduce the band. Uh, Queen with the gold, Mike J. Price. Queen of Stimply Stunning Media, Lazala Perry. The Human T. Race and the ones and twos in the building, along with our guest Imani Capri, who's running for City Council President of Maple Heights. Imani, 
Yes, sir. How are you enjoying your time here so far? I love this. You all are great. Thank you so much for your invitation. <laughs> and you know, to what Miss J was saying, we do not all have to have the same opinion on everything, but I think it's important to have dialect. Yeah, dialect. dialogue and be able to say, you know what? You and I have different perspectives on some things related to R. Kelly. But that don't mean we don't like each other. Or it doesn't mean that we can't have some type of dialogue and find some way to right. fix it. All right. I, I, dialogue is what's needed, even if it's difficult. I'm saying screw R. Kelly until the I'm day he you. die. I'm with but you. <laughs> that's I'm my opinion. As a, as listen, I know I said the record companies and the people that were involved need to be punished for what happened to those they girls. Do. They the do. girls were victims. But at the end of the day, listen, I am a man, and I as a man, I have to take responsibility for my own actions. Thank you. And if R. Kelly did those things, and R. Kelly has been convicted of those things. Like, you know, Dave Chappelle said what he said about, you know, that that community. And he was comparing it to, like, you know, he wishes that we we as African-Americans, especially African-American women, don't get respected in this country, period. So to have three African-American women, two are my co-hosts, you know, plus a shout-out to my girl, Miss Marissa, who was out there working hard for the, uh, the campaign she's working on. So shout-out to her for working hard. That's why she's not able to be here. You know, November 2nd is coming around the corner. And African-American women, I give y'all one thing. Y'all outvote us. And, I, and, and as an African-American yeah. man, I have to admit that. And especially my age bracket between the ages of 35 and 52. Because the simple fact of the matter is y'all y'all niggas too lazy to do any damn thing. Excuse my pardon, my friends, but I'm going to say it anyway. Y'all will. And just because somebody goes with a candidate, that doesn't mean that that's the best candidate for you. Meaning, I don't care if your best friend, who used to be, a, who was about to be an ex councilman in a certain ward, went with this candidate, and you know him since birth. Don't mean absolutely, positively, oh it's nothing God, right you now. Are funny. I'm just saying. So, Kevin Kelly's not the right candidate for you. <laughs> I, I will. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm keep. I will keep my. Th- I mean, you already I, gave your endorsement. Right? I, I have not yet. Oh, I'm sorry. waiting. Oh yeah, he's waiting until the end of the show. show. Oh, so I got a couple of them that I'm giving out. Okay. So, Are you which ones? Mayoral race. What I else? got a couple of them that I'm giving out. Oh now, calm okay. down. All right. Calm all down. Right, you boo. pushing the. You you're trying to push the needle a little bit, huh? Trying to get a little four one one. I ain't giving you that. <laughs> so, Amani. Yes. So the thing about it is, is like you know, you discuss you know discuss the your candidacy and things of that nature what is the hardest part about running a political campaign what is the one of the hardest parts what are the hardest things you on the campaign trail i know health and things of that nature have slowed you down a little bit not that much but what is the hardest part i would say so far the hardest the two most challenging things it's your campaign you have to own it mm-hmm. so you know even though you may have volunteers at the end of the day People have lives and schedules. People do as much as they can, but if they can't, you have to fill it all. You, you got to fill in the pieces. And so um, I'm doing a whole lot, mm-hmm. even with volunteers. So that that has been challenging. Like, you know, I do the interviews, and then mm-hmm. I'm building my own website, and then I'm, like, doing it and doing it. But I don't regret it because I know there's good experience for other things. Exactly. The other part is, like... Navigating the politics mm. in a way to where you kind of can stay outside the fray, mm. you know, but you have to do it in such a way to where, you know, should I be elected, I need to be able to have a working relationship with all these individuals that already kind of have some history with each other, different personalities, and yeah. maybe cliques within. Mm-hmm. Those things. Oh, if you're over here with this group, we don't know if we should, you know, like. All of that, which sometimes feels kind of juvenile. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. High schoolish. Learning how to navigate that with grace. And um, what does my boyfriend say? I love him so much. He says. Who he? That's Bay. <laughs> 
uh, he <laughs> says he says you know you kind of have to take the energy of the principal in school and not the janitor like let people clean up their own mess <laughs> <laughs> that's a good well, analogy you know hey, you shout said, out to your dude yeah. right about now i'm gonna give him a shout out as an african-american man you you, you, you get the black fist stuff for that one bro you that's do a that. great analogy that is like, that's you incredible that's so you know <laughs> when i talk with him about different things or meetings or the inside scoop of running this campaign and interacting in the landscape He'll just be like, you know, principal energy. And, you know, and, and, and it's so funny because he's very energetic and stuff. And he'll say, um, you know how the principal is? Like, the principal would be like, yeah, you might have missed a couple of days of school, but that mess got your name on the floor and nobody else is picking it up. He was like, let people be the example of what you feel needs to change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then let my girl, people my kind girl of talks about energy. themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and so I think that um, that that's been like a piece of advice that somebody's giving me that I've has been helpful in navigating. And then just like be yourself. Yeah, you have to. You, know? you got to be yourself. Mm-hmm. You got to be yourself. You have to. Nobody else gonna want that walk walk that mile for you. Period. So. But that that was a great analogy. That is a, that is oh a great, analogy. Great, great analogy. Great analogy. Great, 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 great analogy. analogy. So, what is the one thing? If somebody wants to run for something, what is the one piece of advice you can give them going through all this right now? Mm. And money? Wow. Can I answer that right now? Um, I mean, you're doing it right now, so. Yeah, but sometimes they say it's maybe after November 2nd. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I'm advi- you know what? You, I want you to come back out of November 2nd. Yeah. I think I would just say be very clear about why you do things. Mm. That's good advice for life. Mm. Be really, really clear yeah. about like why you are doing something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. Hold on to your why. Mm-hmm. Right. And if your why is not coming from a genuine place, authentic place, mm-hmm. it will haunt you. <laughs> yep. Yes, it will. Yeah. So um, that would be my advice so far. Right. I'm sure she'll have a lot more after she wins on November 2nd. Uh, exactly. Uh, so Come we, back as the council we'll, president. We'll, right. Right. We'll, we'll say Madam President. <laughs> council president. Madam President. So you, I'm pretty much, you. like, I've heard you on the radio. Um, I, I heard you, you know, on your, your lives and speaking and being authentic. Is what is the, what do you miss talking on the air right now? Because you got to step away because of the yeah, the fair time rule. Right. Um, I do actually miss this, mm-hmm. you know, being in the studio with guests and just having a good time on the air. I, I miss it, but at the same time, I also have been enjoying kind of having a break. Mm-hmm. You need that break sometimes. Yeah, I, and, you know, with oh, my shoot. show, I had two shows on WOVU. I'm produ- producing the shows, booking the shows, interviewing, like all of that nonstop for like almost three years, so... Taking a breather has been cool. Um, I understand. It's been five years for me. And, then and I, I take hiatuses. Right. I do she take hiatuses. hiatuses. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm constantly, as you can see on social media, I have I'm to, constantly though. moving and grooving. Mm-hmm. So, I have to take hiatuses. Sometimes. Just because of all the stuff that I'm, my brain gets exhausted. Yeah. It gets very exhausted. And even though I'm not technically on the air with my shows, I'm still talking to people. Like, all of this is really interviewing. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and helping people use their voice, share their voice, mm-hmm. find their voice. Yep. So, I don't feel like I've veered off too you're, far, but... You're, they're interviewing you. You're interviewing exactly. your constitu- constituents. You have to ask questions. So, mm-hmm. you're used to the interviewing. How does it feel to be on the other side of the fence being interviewed? You know, um... I'm more comfortable with it now Mm -hmm. than I was in the beginning. But I think one thing that I found is just keep it real with people. Like most people are not, most of the people that I've encountered, I I used to be, I'm going to tell you, I used to be like so intimidated to go canvas because, you know. Really? Yeah, really. I'm going to tell you why. When we were on the, when you're on the radio or TV or speaking, people want you there. Right, yeah. and they're listening to your show, and if if they're like, "Oh, she's not good," or "I don't like," like the rejection is kind of far away, and you might not even see feel it, feel it, it mm-hmm. register. Energy, yeah. 
cold knocking on somebody's door who may not know you and let me introduce myself and why you should come out and potentially vote for me. I was like, every time we get ready to go campus, I tell my mom, like, I feel like I'm about to throw up. But my experience was totally different. And what I realized was like, this is just like interviewing people. Mm-hmm. Like, just knock on, first of all, they're glad that you, and most Maple Heights residents are residents that like for you to knock on their door and to see you out trying to introduce yourself to them. That may, You may have been the only company they had that day or that week or that month or Especially that year. Especially during COVID and a lot of COVID. Right? Mm-hmm. So what I found was just be real with people, be honest. But more than that, listen. That's what I would say for somebody who's running for um, office. Listen. Mm-hmm. Listen a lot. I see sometimes with certain elected officials and even other candidates running I think the, the, the temptation of the potential of power can seduce the ego out of people so much that they are not even really listening to the people as much as they should be listening. That's They're not I mean. listening to understand. They're listening to respond. Mm-hmm. Or listen to learn so that you can execute on behalf of. What's that? <laughs> What's the learn part? Y- yes, you and you're right though because I see a lot of people when they run up on opposition, they dismiss it, they correct them, they over talk them, and they yep. walk off. Yep. And then they go live to a vacuum to recount what just happened. So yeah, there's Where no. Where you listening. could learn so much. Like if you listen to that person that you may not mm-hmm. agree with, mm-hmm. this is a life lesson. Mm-hmm. You know, if I if I had just shut you down, or I nobody can shut you down or me down really, but let's just say if I the first thing you said I like R. Kelly and then everything else I just refuse. Maybe if I just listen to what you had to say, listening doesn't mean agree. Exactly. But I show you the respect to have the space to express how you feel, and then I share my perspective and why. Maybe something might shift in your perspective because mm-hmm. I showed you respect, mm-hmm. or vice versa. Mm-hmm. And I think the same thing is needed when it comes to our politics because it has gotten to like a really nasty, funky, dysfunctional level. At definitely at the national level. Oh my God! Dignity has to be restored. So listen mm-hmm. and learn from people. They're not gonna do that. Right? They never do. So <laughs> They're not gonna do that. I mean, the thing is, is that I really appreciate the genuine honesty that you're showing right now, you know, and I think that's what missing in politics, especially I'm, I like to, I, I'm everywhere, you know, so like here, there, I like, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing, thank <laughs> like, you for sharing when you're out there. Like, and, and the reason I do that is because people who can't get out there or can't be informed, uh, that's the one thing that I do it for. And the one thing that I usually do, I everybody, like, why do you go and share every time you go to the Board of Elections or early vote? Because people still don't know, they'll probably be too busy. Like, I'm down here right now. You know, like the protest that, you know, the other pastors did in Sherman Williams. I had somebody, I thought, like, shout out to Azel Boat who ran for board too. He came <laughs> right down. He was like, where you at? I'm like, downtown here, downtown Sherman Williams. He he was right, he was bright, he came right down, like five to ten minutes later, like he flew down because that Sherman Williams thing, we talk about the racism against the black contractors mm-hmm. and not employing black contractors is more important than you know, giving this is an opportunity to give African American people who have who work work in that field a job, a position. There's a $600 million project going on downtown with Sherman Williams. Mm-hmm. They're building their home office there. And when I said allegedly that a pastor and somebody from the Black Contractors Union took a backdoor deal for $1 million, so that means that the other pastors are trying to get the Black Contractors at least 20 to $30 million. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like making, the, oh, I'm going to get these black contractors for a million dollars when they're worth much more than that. That's why you got people out here not going to these fast food restaurants after COVID because I'm going to make more money staying the hell at home. So you got to realize that you got to, sometimes you got to up the ante when it comes to people because people want to know what can you do for me and what can you do for the community. I got Ramina Foster over here. She's, she says 100. She's listening. She's she's listening. She's listening to Ramita, she's listening I, to her her residents. She's a precinct committee person. Ramita always listens to her residents. She might not like what's going on all the time in War One, but she's but she but Ramina Foster. I'm gonna give give a black woman a shout out. Ramina Foster, precinct committee person. 
you always listen to your residents. Shout out to the block parties that you. And throw. we don't always agree. Ramini right, and I don't always right. agree, but there's that respect factor. So, all right, I'm gonna just take a quick shot at John Gruden's emails. You know? Yes, Imani. Yep, I have her. I did. I did have that on CNN in the background a couple of days ago when I was posting. What posts. you think about that? What you I think mean, about the ex ex Vegas Raiders coach doing all that dirty stuff he's saying on them emails? I just think you know, if most people have to start off saying I don't have a racist bone, and you probably do. <laughs> like I, I, so the fact that he's not the coach anymore, right? I think is probably a good thing. Um. It's just a time for us to do better and stop faking the funk. I mean, for real. You can't know that you've done something like that in your past and then turn around and try to say, oh, well, I'm not this or I didn't that or I don't have these feelings or opinions towards people of color or women or people who are part of the LGBTQIA plus community. You know, listen, news announcement, public service announcement, a certain type of white patriarchal male misogyny racism sexism all the other kind of isms is dying there's nothing productive and conducive that comes out of that to uplift all people right so if you are trying to hold on to that that type of mindset mm -hmm. this false idea of superiority because of the color of your skin or the gender or your sexual orientation preference and you you know, uh, disparage other groups. Like it's gonna, it's gonna bite you. It's gonna bite mm -hmm. you. So I, I just, um, I think it's a good thing he's not the coach anymore. Right. I mean, it took a long time to get here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. embarrassingly. It, it, here's the thing: he wasn't being investigated. The NFL was just doing a random. Like a dragnet random sweep of all the emails and him and, and the reason why that Bruce, whoever leaked that one between him and former Redskins general manager Bruce Allen, here's the reason why it was leaked because Daniel Snyder, the owner of the Washington football team, he used to be the Redskins, you know, was trying to get something on George Allen because George Allen was suing him. There's more to this and there's, story. And there's going to be more people going down that rabbit hole besides Gruden. I mean, the... <laughs> <laughs> so I got a couple people over here. So okay, uh, Troy, I'll get to you in a minute. Um, <laughs> so Sam Edward Moore is saying John Gruden. He said that was the bullish shit I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> like he doesn't up. have a racist bone in his body. He's like, set yeah, up. He, I, he's saying it's I wore my up. hip boots when he said that for real. Um, <laughs> Ramina, Ramina um, is saying Larry, Mad Love. She loves us. We love her back. Um, Troy. Troy, I wasn't blowing kisses at you, so don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, uh, shout out to Troy Harris. I give my man a shout out. Heist Girl, too. You know, he's always been a good actor. He, we may not agree sometimes, but, you know. Ramina says, Larry, are you going, to, did, Larry, are you or did you speak on what you guys talked about? Um, so I don't know what that was, but she she wants to know if you're going to speak on that. But um, John Gruden. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, as long as these, this is from 11 years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been doing, and, and he, I guess it stopped in 2018. So, so, if, so in the beginning, he was talking, you know, he was making very derogatory comments about black men, correct? Right, exactly. Okay. The black so, players. Black players. And, and, and Roger Goodell, he didn't, he couldn't stand Roger Goodell, from what I understand. I think I he read. said Roger Goodell could give him some, um, some oral fellatio. Well, I, I don't know about all of that, <laughs> but I know he had said some things about Roger Goodell. <laughs> But it was it wasn't until he said something um very homophobic. Yes, and that's Dave's point. Yeah. Is when it came out. <laughs> people are getting canceled after they say stuff about gay people, but what about black, black people? Yeah. So and that's where I was going. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and trust me, you know, I, I love my brothers and sisters in the LGBTQIA community. Um uh, I, some of them are my dear friends. But how how was it acceptable that he was able to speak these derogatory things about African American men, but as soon as he says something against that community, it, whom I love very dearly, is a slave plantation. But it's also feeling entitled. It's, That's the whole thing, and they're using the black people as a scapegoat. I mean, it, they use they like I mean, they, they always going to use the black people as a scapegoat, even with feminism. They're using the black women as a scapegoat. 
It's just, it's just, it's always entitled white people can make the rules and feel like they can do uh, uh, All right. That's from the that's T Rex perspective. T-Rex, uh, like that's young black man. Too, okay, so how many people were not surprised that John Gruden would say these things in private? How many people are raise your hand if you were not saying surprised, were not surprised that he would say listen. Let, that's four hands. Uh, what? That he what? Was, that John Gruden was how many people were not surprised that he say these things? Raise your hand. How, oh, I wasn't Rosa? surprised. Yeah, no. they've, they've said far, you know, far, far worse. There's probably some and, more far worse stuff that's going to come out. But listen, this is what Troy just said. He said the NFL said there are more emails that the NFL has that will expose others in high positions that they don't want to release. 650,000. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because ever since <sighs> AOL... They've been saying, be careful what you type. Be careful what you type. All these people thought they were above scrutiny. I'll yeah. never be discovered. Like the cardinal rule is, be careful what you type. It never goes away. You've got away. mail. Don't right. It never goes uh, away. Uh, so it'll be fun watching this. It, well, it, it, I, and I'm go. sure it's going to unravel. And, 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 and I'm, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to go ahead and put it on out there. Boy, if they said something about my baby Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh, <laughs> I, uh, bye bye. Uh, listen, I'm yeah. on my way to Pittsburgh. I, I don't. They will fight for her. Steel. I'm uh, going. I'm uh, going. Uh, I'm going to uh, rescue my man. <laughs> so, Sorry, Ice Cube. I'm gonna have to go rescue my man. Uh, uh, so, oh, they. So, uh, Stan and Moore said he said I would love to see Jerry Jones emails. Oh no, right. we oh, know no, Jerry. No. Yes, That's, we know Jerry's racist. We, Jerry just breathes the Jerry, He I, looks like I, I it think though. He, I think he writes the N word in his sleep to notes to some of uh, to some of his executives to give him a laugh or something like that. I think Jerry. I think Jerry Jones has a lawn jockey outside in the back of his manage, mansion. I just truly believe that he, Jerry, he is the epitome of. I hate black white people. male <laughs> chauvinistic. I'm like? better than any. Other specimen. Right. What? I think that. So I'm not a big sports person. Uh-huh. So some of these people I do not know. She's like, I don't know who that is. They are. Keep but, but, but um, you said white male supremacy. Jerry Jones is patriarchy. Yeah, yeah patriarchy. I just think like you know this this false idea of like everything that I said about white male patriarchy supremacy, mm-hmm. the fallacy of that supremacist idea, and and and. How that gets carried out in culture mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and how that was founded mm-hmm. or at the foundation of how our country right. started. And we still, until we really deal with slavery, I mean, really deal and, with it, and, and, all this stuff is not going to go away because there's this false idea of a power dynamic. What what generation are you? I'm sorry, Coach um, I'm Are you in the what? millennials? How old are you? I'm X. You, you oh, Gen X? What Gen X. I'll be 43. Get out oh, you're, you're Gen X like me? Is that, okay, so you're not a millennial? That, 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 that they, they call it 43. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, I was going to, the reason why I asked mm-hmm. is because you said until we address slavery, um, we're not going to move past this. Well, the generation behind us said it didn't affect them, so it didn't. it don't exist. That's how millennials feel. Uh, I don't know if that's representative that's not, of all millennials. That's not representative. I, I think hear that. A lot. The ones that I've talked to. Oh, uh, they, um, because they don't. Re- they, they. I get uh, what they saying. I mean, because... I think they don't really get it. And like, sorry. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. I, I think that I, I just think that really, to be honest with you, we just got to get past. Listen, we got to get past all this BS that's been going on right now. As far as let's deal. I know slavery. And let's deal with it now. Black but pe- we're, people. We're in are slavery dealing. in a different stage. Yeah. We're enslaved this at a one. different stage. Yeah, we're enslaved by our own mentality because we've been brainwashed for so long. That's why certain former, soon to be former councilmen, can go and betray their brothers in certain fraternities and go endorse a white man that don't care about the but east it's, side. It's <laughs> deeper too than just what we need to undo inside of our own culture. Mm-hmm. As a result of that, you have people who are legislators Whoop. literally trying to turn back the law of time. Mm-hmm. Not just the hand of time. The, the law. law. The, the law. law of time. Yes. Abortion, rights, civil rights. Cannot, civil rights. I mean, if you if, if women can't have say-so over their bodies their bodies and their health care, is that not a form of slavery? That is, actually. Mm-hmm. You are absolutely okay, correct. So, and, and then to see how women of color and black women in particular would be impacted by that. It's a lot. It's very, it is a very relevant issue. I think what is 
if I can just put this out there, I think what's needed is more people that are not intellectually lazy and courageous to help educate mm. people and also help connect the dots. And for our mm. young people, you know, you you have you have people trying to turn back the law of time and not teach accurate history in the school system, mm -hmm. trying to label it under critical race theory, which those two things are not, not the same. same. Bullshit. So I think, like, it's really that is important. some bullshit. I think it's really <laughs> super important that shows like yours, other people who are journalists, that we are giving people the information and helping them connect the dots because mm -hmm. there's so many other distractions and things going on that while you're paying attention to this over here, Texas just is, got off this law. Uh, right. And it's been reversed from the appeal. I think back to um Yeah, it was reversed being from... active or something. It'd be I, I have to mm -hmm. get caught up. But the point is we until we address slavery, what did um my girl say in color purple? Until you do right by me. Everything you until touch really, until we gonna really fail. deal with that and start looking at how there was this false sense of a power dynamic set up. Right. And then institutions built around that. I think it, it's it sounds like a lot, but and it is a lot. But it connects back to that. <sighs> but it does. So we're gonna T Race, we're gonna take our last break. I'm not doing the lines today because I got some announcements to make. But that is a very good point. By the way, Listen, it, it, listen. Everybody says that the NFL half to the Super Bowl halftime show is going to have Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Eminem, and I think Ice Cube might be on there. That ticket. The thing about it is, I think John Gruden and Jerry Jones between them said more N words than all of those rappers combined. Just saying. And vote for Imani Cabri if you are in Maple Heights. So I'll be right back with my endorsements. This is her focus. We all focusing right now. We'll be right back. This is Catherine Daniel, and I'm checking in with Headline Eye on WNRV 108.1. This is WNRV 108.1. Chapter 2.
Welcome back to the headline eye on www.wnrv1081.com. Nerve DJ's network. We get on your nerves on this on this nice day, uh, September. Woo! It is hot. It is. The like, devil is over there in the corner. Is that what's happening? <laughs> he waving. Know, you know what? He right there. So when you have a, a rate up, when you have a former um, producer. Well, still producing, and who's running for our office, Amani Capri. Everything comes up when she's just said some things. Very knowledgeable young lady. Very. Mm-hmm. When you got when you got knowledge in the room. Maple Heights would be lucky to have them <laughs> have her as their council they president. Bold. They should be. They will be. All yes, right, they will. So. All right, T Rex. I hope my Facebook live is up because I'm going to make is. this perfectly Ooh. clear right now. So I am going to. I never do this before. I'm gonna do this right now. I'm gonna sit here. All right. So the first person that I'm, I'm actually sweating, going y'all. to endorse for candidacy is the woman that is right across from me, Imani Papri, oh. for City Maple Heights County Council President. No, President. City Council. City Council President. President. The reason why is that we need young, innovative, new leadership in this mug, and she will inject some sense, hopefully, in Maple Heights. Um, She's my endorsed candidate as well. All right, so also in Garfield, uh, Barbie West. Barbie West. I know Barbie. War she, three. Yeah, War three. So I'm gonna endorse. She's my endorsed candidate for Garfield Heights. Garfield Heights. So I'm not doing none of the wars. So please, whoever's listening, who's running in these wars, I'm not doing any wars because, listen, I live in Ward four. There's a race going on. I'm not. I'm. I'll probably say Ward four for last. But huh? I, I'm not doing war. I'm not doing my war. As far as an endorsed candidate. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, and by the way, you know, the six years that councilman, former city councilman Ken Johnson got, you know, he's going to roll over on some people right now. And he has to pay restitution. Mm-hmm. $619,000. Yeah, I, I saw that. Good. 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 By the time Ken Johnson gets out of federal prison, unless he snitches on some more people. Well, he's he going to do that. He'll be 80 years old. So. That's it. So who? You, oh, you're in Ward Four, right? Yeah, I'm in Ward Four. Oh, yeah. So, so you're not in. Have yeah. you seen the condition of Ken Johnson's board? Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's been that way for years. Yeah, I, I can't it's right stand around it. the corner from right, me. Right. It's so been that way for years. I know. I'm, right. I'm not endorsing anybody in Ward Four. That, right. that race is. Uh, uh, I don't know what's going on with that. I met Eric Walker. You know, I met Deborah Gray. I don't know. I'll, 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 you know what? I'll, you know, as far as Ward Four, I'll flip a coin. So. You know when you get in the booth. Uh, yeah, I know when I get in the booth. So, T Rex, drum roll, please, for the last endorsement. And that is the mayor of the city of Cleveland. I am endorsing Justin Bibb for mayor of the city of Cleveland. And let me tell you why. I go by the way of my heart. Now, a lot of people may not agree with it. Young. They call Justin Bibb young. They call him inexperienced. Well, guess what? There was a certain senator in Chicago they called young and inexperienced. Last name was Obama. I'm not comparing him to Obama. But the thing about it is, is that 
I have a city council person. My former city council person is in federal prison for bribery. That's under Kevin Kelly's watch as city council president. We had a city council person in Ward 7 who lived in Cleveland Heights. That is under your account. That is under your administration, Kevin. You blocked, voter suppressed, not only the Q deal, but the $15 an hour thing. I don't care what you say about the signatures. Kevin, you have been, listen, you kept, you, you collected a paycheck. That's what you did. That's all you did. It's time for new, if, if it shakes up the corruption in City Hall and, and, and you know, the, the light has turned on and the roaches are scattering like all over the damned floor. If it crushes the roaches in City Hall, all the corruption, I am tired of the FBI and other alphabet boys of law enforcement coming down and investigating my... In the booth. In the booth. Um, I understand that. I, and, and, and I'll put it out there. And I'm going to put it out there. Um, after November 2nd, I will tell you who I voted for. All right. Win or lose. Like the thing about it is, is that the reason that I'm going behind Bip, and another reason I'm going to say this, to, and also I'm going to say this about, I also have another announcement. I worked with Pastor Aaron Phillips before on ca political campaigns. Yes, I have. I've been a member of Sure House. I am taking a self-imposed boycott of my membership of Sure House Baptist Church until indefinitely. Say what now? I am taking a self-imposed boycott of Sure House Baptist Church indefinitely because of what happened last Wednesday. I understand that maybe you might have been overzealous, Aaron, but you don't put me in a position to where I have to choose right and wrong. What you did, putting us there in that position, saying that the members go the way that you go, you need to talk to your head of, you need to talk to the head of the deacon board, Mr. Marvin Freeman. He's not happy right now that it happened. You didn't tell him what was going on. By the way, if you really want to know what happened with that million dollar deal that somebody was supposed to get and cut out the rest of the pastors, you want to ask Sherwin Williams, period. Because of the simple fact of the matter is, I told you. And when we talked, privately i'm not you said i think that you told me that would i want my son to run my son is nine years old for mayor if my son was qualified 